it simple. Chanel, welcome. We haven't seen you in a while. I love watching you on Instagram. And that's it. I'm Chanel and I'm done speaking. Thank you. That was awesome. And you t you touched on something that we haven't really talked about in this room today that we should dedicate a, a different room is uh, pausing. So stopping to actually move forward faster. And you were right when you said when we do reflect, when we spend that time, that allows us to actually be more efficient, more productive. Um, thank you so much for that. Uh, up next is Coach K, Popcorn. So welcome back. <laughs> Wow, I've got the biggest challenge of my life right now. Don, I, I'm not going to turn the timer on and I'm not going to be C-Rock and talk slow. I got to share this story because it's important, but even more important is the lesson that I learned from it that I want to share with everyone. So I've got to do this. The hardest thing ever is going to tell you this story in like less than 30 seconds or so. And is this goes back to Friday the 13th, March 2015. My wife, Sonia, my business partner of 20 years, is going to pick up an elderly client to take her to closing. And I'm in Louisiana speaking at a real estate event. And she goes to pick her up because she has no family. And on her way to pick the lady up, she comes on the highway, must have gotten clipped or something, took a spin on the highway, took a head-on collision in a Nissan Juke. That that head-on collision, the, 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 car, the car kept her alive. Okay, so that was the best thing that happened. That little go-kart car kept her alive. And I'm in Louisiana, and I get a call about, I don't know, 12 o'clock. I'm just waiting for my 2 o'clock flight to come home and find out that she's just been, they just figured out who she was two hours after the accident. So I'm on a plane back and get back, and, and she's on a two-week, or I'm sorry, a 12-week a recovery from the shattering of her hip. She had to be off her feet for 12 weeks. During that recovery on the crutches and everything, you know, she gets through that and she recovers. Two weeks later, after she's off crutches, she's we're plugging her back into life, you know. Took a week to get her behind the car again. I, I started plugging her back into the office, telling the girls just to have something easy for her to do. And, you know, I'd, I've never been in that situation, so I don't know what was going on in her mind other than it, it was tough for her to recover. So two weeks after she's back to normal, uh, after off the crutches, she just doesn't wake up one day. She's actually laying in bed, snoring like a trucker. I mean, like snoring so loud. And she had had so much trouble sleeping. There was insomnia. She was up all night. So she's snoring. The last thing I'm going to do is wake her up because, you know, nothing bad happens to us. That just doesn't. So it's just fine. So about 1030 in the morning, I realized she's still not moving or anything. So I try to wake her up and she doesn't respond. So to get through this a little quicker, we, get, we call 911, get them over there. They're stabilizing her. Everything looks fine. I mean, they're not worried about anything. But the problem happens where they lose her on the way to the hospital for four minutes and they get her back. They lose her in the ER room for another four minutes and they get her back. Unfortunately, eight minutes without a brain without oxygen parts of the brain start to die. And at that point, her anoxic brain injury basically took her to that vegetative state. They had to cool her body down. She was in a coma for the next five months. Now, while I'm in the hospital and we're figuring this out, I do what I do best. I follow great people like you guys. I'm asking the doctors, where would you take your wife? Where would you take your wife? And they were like, you know, it's three hours away in Lincoln, Nebraska. So I took her there and that's where we were for five months. So let me just let me bring this back so you get something out because I know we're right there, Don. But, you know, I remember just doing the Nestle plunge. This might date me a little bit, but I did the Nestle plunge on the couch. I, uh, actually, I got to back up. We, we lost her on November 4th of 2015. We had to make the decision to let her go. She was not going to come back. She was not going to be the person that she would want to be. And the kids all agreed. So January of 2016, I do the nesty plunge on the couch and I'm just laying there. I just want to, you know, I'm done. I mean, married for 20 years, my business partner, successful business, and I'm laying there. My coach brain kicks in. So it, I realized it wasn't even on purpose meditation. It was the repetition of going through two coaching certifications. You know, I still need to do the NLP stuff and I, and I am on your December one. You got to tell me how to get there, Don, because I always want to get better and better and better. But anyway, I'm laying there and I'm like, what would Coach Corn tell his clients to do when they just have a sick kid at home? Or, you know, I had a, a client once that was on his back for 
three weeks. And I was like, do you know how much database work you can get done with three weeks on your back? Oh my gosh, not that you would ever wish that upon somebody. But the point was, is that I had to get up and go. I had a daughter that was a junior moving to a senior and she had, she, everybody else got to go to college. She was the next one. I really didn't have a choice. So the thing I just wanted to share with you guys is, you know, repetition and programming and being a part of this room. And Don, when I go through your coach certification, I'll go through 10 more certifications as long as I'm coaching somebody, because I always want to get better and better and better. And that repetition forces me to be like, make it happen. So I, I've got to stop there because I know we're like right there. And I apologize for the extra share. No, no, please don't. Uh, it was incredible and powerful, and, and thank you so much for, for the share. Um, never, ever. Uh, that, that was great. Thank you, Coach K.